All right, I know it's been a few months, but you guys gotta have a little bit more faith in me. There is no way I was gonna forget about the Universe Zero Saga and our Omni Goku and Omega Vegeta What If that surprisingly did so well, and I'm really thankful to you guys for that. So after a grueling battle that involved confrontation with the Grand Priest himself, Omni Goku and Omega Vegeta were just unable to defeat or even match the Grand Priest. And before we go any further guys, if you are not caught up on our Dragon Ball Super God of Destruction Vegeta Saga What If, definitely be sure to go check that out. It's a lot of original content that we made here ourselves and it's about 13 or 14 parts long if I'm not mistaken, so there is a lot to catch up on. However, really quickly before our video, allow me to introduce, drum roll please, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an excellent game. Not only does it include all the ins and outs of a great mobile phone game, but it includes every single thing you could ask for of a game that stands the test of time. There are so many amazing features that I genuinely cannot fit them all here. However, I'm gonna talk about my favorite one so far, that being the multiple diverse factions. My favorite most definitely have to be the High Elves. They are a faction that tell the amazing story of time and how once brought down to their knees by the Dark Elves, yet rise again to wealth and glory through nothing but camaraderie and strong faction prowess. Not only that, but the High Elves in nature aren't picky at all. As long as you're willing to help their cause, they are more than happy to have you join the crew and i absolutely love that and if that's not enough for you raid even has a brand new faction joining the roster called the sylvan watchers the sylvan watchers are going to include forest elves ants druids and fays all coming to the already extensive lineup of raid shadow legends casts alongside a brand new forge pass which you can claim some of raid shadow legends most powerful gear there's also an exclusive reward if you're an amazon prime member new players please do not forget if you click on the link in the description or scan the qr code you can get a free champion Ina, and also get a loot pack that's worth almost 30 dollars you can redeem that code right here and your loot will show up right here come on guys it's no better time to hop in and play raid shadow legends so gear up and let's get on the field for our saiyans versus the grand priest however the difference was simply just too big no matter what they did it was all for naught the Grand Priest always seemed infinitely stronger than them, but when defeat meant the complete erasure of Universe 7 and victory was improbable, the final card and the one that helped the Z Fighters persevere through many dreadful situations in the past was the fusion. It was time for Vegito once again. Death is inevitable, but if they can just make the Grand Priest take back the decision to revert Universe 7 back to nothingness, then that's enough success for them. That'd be the best case scenario and so, Vegeta entrusts Broly with whipping the other Saiyans into shape. But even the fusion of Omni Goku with the newly evolved destroyer Vegeta wasn't enough to make the Grand Priest hinge. Celestial Vegito is effortlessly defeated. In his final moments, when Goku and Vegeta are separated, Goku's mind was already numb. The chaos of Omni Ki exhausted everything out of him. While Vegeta spits blood as he tells the Grand Priest about the day he'll somehow return and destroy him. The Grand Prix shrugs it off of course, but right before Vegeta closes his eyes, he sees a vision. A vision of what could be referred to as Super Saiyan Infinity. Now once again, if you haven't watched the God of Destruction Vegeta saga, I hope that enticed you enough to go back and binge the rest of it, because from this point forward, the sequel, the Universe Zero Saga begins. If you guys haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click the little notification bell as well to never miss an upload as soon as they go live. And if you haven't already, consider leaving a like on the video as well for chapter one of the Universe Zero Saga, our very own fan manga that I know you guys have been waiting weeks for. The like goal for the last video was I think 4,000. So let's see if we can get this one to 4,500 for the start of a new series. But anyways, without further ado, So after Lord Zalama puts forth his proposal to put into place a new multiversal infrastructure, he conveniently saves Universe 7 from absolute doom. The rest of Universe 7 is merged with Universe 6 from there on out. Broly goes to planet Sadala, Piccolo leaves on a journey, while Gohan and the others keep the Earth's peace. As for Goku and Vegeta, their souls are banished from the multiverse and sent straight to an independent and lawless realm 
called Universe Zero. And so, both Goku and Vegeta open their eyes into an independent domain, a region that is mutually exclusive from the known universes, the vast unknown. Hey Kakarot, where are you Vegeta asks. I'm right here. Wait, who, who turned off the light? Goku replies. This is insane, I can't see or much less feel anything. Did we even get our bodies back? Where's this instruction manual, Vegeta says. Sure enough, reality around them was endlessly dark, but for Goku, there was something nostalgic about this. The two lament about what to do until Goku recalls a memory from back when he was in the void. Those 12,000 years he spent in the void are all drilled into his subconsciousness. Sooner or later, the suppressed memory of that darkness is gonna show up, but for now, all he can think about is finding a way to turn on some light in here. That's it, Goku says. Listen, Vegeta, how about we try radiating ourselves? Universe Zero may be somewhat different from back home, but it isn't as if we can't power our way through darkness. Let's fill this energy with our own light. What's with this poetry? Well, whatever, I was planning on doing the same. Let's go, I'll impose myself on this universe, Vegeta states. Just like that, the two of them unleash their strongest possible transformations. Goku can't use the Omni Key, but the enhanced clarity he acquired after breaking out of the void had earned him something else. The ability to use Super Saiyan Blue and Mastered Ultra Instinct simultaneously. The combination can be referred to as Super Saiyan White from here on out. As for Vegeta, he lost his Destroyer Key, but the growth he had during the battle with Omni Goku, Zenith, and then the Grand Priest is all very much still there. Goku is no longer Omni Goku, but Vegeta is very much still Omega Vegeta. Together, they radiate all nearby reality and effectively bring their bodies back into existence. What the hell, Kakarot? You were stronger back during the battle with the Grand Priest, Vegeta laughs. Give me a break, Vegeta. At least I haven't used the name Omega. What are you going to do if you get a better transformation? Name it Omega Vegeta 2 or something? That isn't going to make any sense, Goku mocks back. Well, I have had a premonition that I'll soon obtain the impossible and surpass even the Grand Priest. I'll achieve Super Saiyan Infinity, Vegeta boldly declares. Wait, that name actually sounded pretty cool, Goku replies. They continue to bicker about who will get to Infinity first, and then Goku notices a planet right above them. Since there's nowhere else to go, the two decide to head there first. Oddly enough, once they get closer, they can instinctively sense a source of light other than them. It still isn't visible, but it's there on the planet. That much is certain. The only plausible conclusion is that someone else is imposing their own self onto the planet, which means there's another individual close by. Definitely an exciting piece of information for these two. This will be their first encounter with someone else in Universe Zero, and it doesn't take them long to find that light either. They slow their pace and gradually make their way to that side of the planet, but right when they barely make out a person standing in the horizon, the other guy experiences a chill run down his spine, and he completely turns blue. No way. Is that the Northern Enigma? And who's the other guy with him? The mysterious individual exclaims, as he was scared and breathless. Goku does his obligatory, yo! But there's no reply from this individual. He starts making a run for it, but Vegeta instantly catches up and stops him. What's the rush there, my friend? Come on, let's have a talk, Vegeta says. Uh, all right, what do you want to talk about, he replies. First of all, can you tell us your name and share some food, Goku asks. I'm vain, and I'm afraid I haven't eaten anything since the last time I met someone, he says. Well, when was that, Vegeta asks. Honestly, I have no idea, he replies. Well, at least tell us where we can find some food, Goku asks. Sure, just go somewhere with a lot of planets. You'll find all sorts of species that you can eat, but I'm sure you already know that considering how you came all this way to the bottom of the universe. I'm assuming you two are exploring, he asks. No, we just suddenly found ourselves here. Wait, why are you turning bluer every passing second? Just relax, nobody's hurting you, Vegeta says. I I'm confused, the guy replies. Why are you asking these questions? You are among the strongest known beings there are, the inevitable dragon, the man revered as the northern enigma, he replies. 
Vegeta looks at Goku, but Goku is simply just as clueless as he is. They both wonder if it's Shishido this guy is talking about and whether or not Shishido resembles Vegeta, but that aside, they quickly reassure Vayne that all they need to know is where to find the Angel's Realm. Vayne had already given up on his life. He wasn't convinced at all and thinks they're just pranking him, but decides to play along. Well, the Angel's Realm is straight up north. If you had permission to go there, it wouldn't take too long. In fact, one of the angels may even come pick you up, but I guess I'll explain the structure of reality. This universe exists straight below the angel's realm. I've heard that there might be something beyond the angel realm, but I'm not even sure if that's true or not, he says. This is when Goku and Vegeta begin to wonder if they have permission or not. Guess we'll just mention Whis if we're not welcome, Goku says. And so with that, the two of them just start their journey to the north. Vayne continues to act like an instruction manual, but soon enough, a strong and unprecedented wave of light catches them off guard. Goku asks about it and Vayne simply replies how light gathers wherever there's a strong energy source. It can be a person or any kind of other sentient mass. The further above you go, the brighter things get, but also just as much dangerous because the strongest of the strongest are the ones who reign supreme over the entirety of the north. Hey, earlier you said that we were at the very bottom of the universe. Does that mean there's nothing beneath us or just no source of light, Vegeta asks. I'm not sure there's something, but why would someone continue going to the depth just because they want to see if there is something or not? If the darkness is too much, at some point even your own light will be subdued. It's simply not worth it, he replies. Both Goku and Vegeta were having trouble picturing all of this, but Vayne's words are easy to understand. They continue their journey to the north, but one can only go so far without food. Goku and Vegeta are having a hard time bearing it all. It's been a while since they last saw another source of light. They should have just tried searching for food on the previous planet they saw. Bane, how long until we see another planet, Goku asks. As I said before, I have no idea. The only certain thing is that you can always get somewhere if you keep going north, Vayne replies. Hearing this, Goku's mind goes into full survival mode. He's suddenly overwhelmed by the dreadful weight of his memories from the void. No food, nothing. Right then, in that very moment, he lets out a scream that sends a great roar in every direction. His voice starts reverberating and then suddenly, it compounds. So much so that an individual suddenly appears right in front of them. Goku. Vegeta. I've been waiting for your arrival, he says. Whoa, as you said, Vane. An angel himself appeared to pick us up, Goku says. Indeed, my name is Kanshi. Lord Zalama informed me of your arrival some time ago. Well then, I guess I'll take you two to the angel realm, Kanshi states. Goku and Vegeta were about to bid Vane farewell, but surprisingly, Kanchi asks if he'd like to come as well. Vane ends up replying positively as he was still under the influence that all of this was a stupidly overblown prank. Vegeta is the northern enigma and if he's to survive, he has to play along. Suddenly, Kanchi warps the three of them straight into a place of infinite whiteness. Goku and Vegeta immediately start swirling their heads and in the distance, they observe a somewhat familiar individual walking straight towards them. Among everyone who has ever existed, this individual is the one whose birth was the most unusual. Ordinarily, even the greatest life forces will simply meet their end without ever learning about Universe Zero, but there was one man who cracked a hole in the fence. Millions of years ago, when Zeno erased six universes, there was a man the ancient Saiyan named Yamoshi who was an inhabitant of one of those universes. The erasure of the universe happened right before Yamoshi's son was born. Thanks to his unreal power and instincts, Yamoshi realized that everything around them will cease to exist, including themselves. However, his instincts somehow unleashed the reverse string entanglement, one of the four forbidden techniques of the cosmos. And just like that, his universe and five others would be erased. But his son? was influenced by this technique. He was warped outside the influence of Zeno straight to an unknown region in Universe Zero. It's been millions of years since then. Shishido has survived and thrived countless wars and battles somehow. 
His current worry is how his hair keeps changing every thousand or so years. The cause of his anxiety has much to do with his extraordinarily moody wife and then, of course, there's his mischievous son. As Shishido continues taking one step after another toward Goku and Vegeta, they can finally make out that the person coming towards them is in fact a Saiyan. One who's been around in a reality this preposterous for millions of years. Chills run down the both of their spines. Vane knows full well about these smug expressions. That's the face of anticipation. Meanwhile, back in the new Universe 7, it's been 10 years since Goku and Vegeta were banished from the multiverse as Champa asks Broly to take over as the Destroyer. He's afraid he won't be able to keep up with the times, but with Broly, you bet he'll always surpass any and all kinds of expectations. Subsequently, back in the Angel Realm, now that Shishido is almost in plain sight, Instinctively, Goku and Vegeta use their greatest power-ups almost purely just out of respect for this ancient Saiyan warrior. The story of Universe Zero has only just begun and I really hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Thank you all so, so much for watching until the end, but that is going to do it for this one. Don't forget to hit that like button before we get out of here, guys. Remember, the goal is going to be 4,500 and I think I might be able to get one of these out maybe once a week, once every two weeks. It depends on how fast I can get the art made. But anyways, have a great, great day, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.